Hello everyone, it's Amy. This is part two of Overuse Anonymous. I have to apologize because it looks like I got up from the, the computer to do my makeup and I did. But not for any specific reasons. Uh, I was waiting for my computer to fix itself because I was having trouble uploading my 13 minute long second part and it freaked out and I was waiting for my computer to fix itself well fix <sighs> and um past time I put on shit loads of makeup horribly I'm not good at it I'm kind of new to the whole makeup scene but just so you guys can see mm -hmm. yeah not bad it's horrible so the second part is OA. Uh, this is mostly about my experience, and my experience with OA is going to be, and is, a positive thing about my life. I can't stress enough that when you find a place that you go to where you feel comfortable after all the teasings and shit that I've been to, I've been through, you really realize that there's no place that I went before away that I was safe from being teased. I would I would go to school every morning, be teased the whole day. Then I would go home and be teased by my older brothers, mostly one of my brothers and I would go through that. Then I would go clothes shopping and right away when you walk into a shop being my size you feel judged because people are looking at you like nothing's gonna fit even on plus size shops. Uh, you just always feel like these people are just gonna judge you for nothing. And there was no place to go. I literally felt as if I could go anywhere in the world and people are just going to notice my weight. And I've seen psychiatrists and therapists and the first thing that comes out of their mouth when I went to visit them was my weight. Uh, the, the therapist that I'm seeing now, who was great, always began and ended my meetings with my weight and that's okay because she's a therapist and she can do what she wants but when you're constantly hearing it all you're doing is leaving that that session feeling terrible and so you go home and the first thing you want to do is stuff your face <laughs> because you're an emotional wreck and what that person did to you was bad because they've mentioned it and that for me was a bad thing because I didn't want to go anywhere and hear it because it was already stuck in my head. I know. Shut the fuck up. Stop saying something. And then I would go out to eat and you know there's always going to be someone saying you don't need to eat or that's a big portion or you're a big person. And I was told that constantly. I couldn't go anywhere. I, w I remember this one time. I was... It was beautiful winter's day I think and uh me and my sister and my mother went to get Italian food we went to go and eat pasta and um uh, you know just we just kind of went in not expecting to hear comments and there was this girl there she was she was young and I can't blame her. She was young. Uh, the first thing that happened was she said, Mommy, look at that girl. She must really love her food. Uh, first of all, the first thing that came to my mind was, Ouch, did that little girl just call me fat? The second thing was, Oh shit, my sister's here. This isn't going to end it well. My third thought was, Doesn't everyone love food? <laughs> so, of course, when we sat down, 
I get upset. I'm depressed. I hate hearing it. And my sister just says, how can someone out loud, by the way, so that the family could hear it? She says, how on earth can someone raise a daughter so ignorant? <laughs> I'm like, whoa. And that just embarrasses me. <laughs> and so it was like, you know, I'm grateful to have a sister who stands up for me. And and it was fun. And she just made me laugh the whole time we were there. And thankfully those people were getting up and leaving <laughs> by that time. So after the whole accident, you know, there there's this thing, there's this space. And a lot of people don't know this, but when you're teased for being w overweight, you don't want to be seen. When you're teased about anything, about your looks, you don't want to be seen. You just don't. They can call you stupid, okay? Then you just don't talk. And people call you fat or ugly. You don't want to be seen. You stay inside. You're a shut-in. You basically don't want to don't want to get up. You don't want to shower. You don't want to get dressed. All you want to do is hide under your blankets and be a shadow because no one notices shadows. I went away and the peace I felt with myself, with my my friends, with my, by friends I mean people in a way, with my mother who was sitting there beside me, with with my higher power, with God, and I don't need to be a religious person, freak to people, but I believe in God and having God in my life was playing a big role and why is my eye looking like that? <laughs> so what you got was a sense of security. I always referred to it as a sanctuary. I was in a sanctuary. It was like being in God's arms. I was in God's arms. And I felt loved. And then you go home and you're like, I really wish that I pinched a tent in that place and slept there. Because that's what I would have done. I loved it so much. So, every year, they have a main retreat. Um, and I can't, I can't say anything bad. It not only is it about recovery, but you feel a lot better because you're every day of your life. You're surrounded by people who don't hate you, that don't look at you in a negative way. You can't even go to your house without thinking somebody's looking at you when you're bad. For me, I wasn't safe in my own house. And I'm still not safe in my own house. That you just feel amazing. And the retreats is like a weekend of safety. A weekend of protection. A weekend in heaven even. I, I'd even go there. And I, I am going there. Because you feel good about yourself. You're eating norm your eating is normal. You're you're a regular eater. You you feel peace. It was overwhelming for a lot of people. A lot of people went home and the first thing they did was eat because it was so overwhelming to get back and people didn't want to feel overwhelmed. I remember feeling so uncomfortable because I was overwhelmed and because I felt so, so safe. You know, you don't know how to handle feeling, feeling what you feel. I began rocking back and forth and that's something I do. I, I rock and that's kind of like a comfort thing for me. And, uh, that's what I did. And someone from the group walked up to me and sat down next to me and he says, is something wrong? And I said, no, it's something I do. But and the thing is, something was wrong. I felt, I felt weird. I felt strange. I felt uncomfortable. I was out of my comfort zone. Every day I woke up and the first thing I did was talk to people. And I wasn't isolated. I, I 
meant something to people. And that feeling was just an extreme emotional ride for me because most people, they're like, I don't feel that. I don't feel wherever I go. I go to church. I feel judged. I go to, I go home. I feel judged. I go to school. I feel judged. There are most people in this world that never even knew the comforts of being around people, actually getting out of your house, but not feeling judged in a group of people, in a room filled with people. The feeling someone someone just took you to heaven and I felt that way and I still do in a way something I feel every day now I even not being in the meetings you feel it you feel the love and I feel it all the time now I can go home or I can go to out with my friends and I know that I won't eat compulsively I know I won't shove sugary snacks in my face because now I know that I am safe and I am going to a place where not only I can talk about my struggles but I can talk about my success and the hope that I have to remain successful and uh this video took too long so thank you so much for watching, and I'm hoping this doesn't screw up again because I really don't want it to. Okay, thank you.